Hi, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio Academy, and I want to do a quick presentation here for you on how to create an STL model from just a cone beam scan of a PVS impression. This is a really big deal um, because historically we've had to either have an intraoral scanner or a lab desktop scanner. Um, or we had to use the cone beam and scan a, a stone model in order to generate an STL that could be um, used in the whole guided surgery process because we, we can't build a guide directly on cone beam data. We needed an STL model that was a little cleaner so that we could have an accurate fitting guide. So this is a really, really uh, big improvement to the process and the workflow. Now, why does it matter? As I mentioned, it eliminates the need for an intraoral or a lab scanner. Uh, it also eliminates the need for any stone model. We're just going to directly scan the impression. That means faster turnaround. It means that we can go with an entirely digital workflow. And I'll go over toward the end why it actually means that we'll have an improved fit with our guide. So this is the Ferguson method. This was developed by Dr. Rick Ferguson. And it's a really sharp um, technique. What we start with is a cone beam scan of an impression. We'll open up the DICOMs in the Blue Sky Bio plan software, planning software, and we'll actually digitize that and turn it into an STL model of the impression. Now, the unique thing is that now we can go and digitally pour that STL model and create um, basically what, what amounts to the same thing you would get if you poured an impression. You get a very accurate uh, STL model that you can use in the implant planning process. Uh, the materials that I used uh, was Genie Fast Set Putty. Uh, this is a PVS putty. It sets in 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Um, I also used the Bosworth plastic impression tray. I think you could probably use any plastic impression tray. Uh, the idea is you just want the uh, impression tray to show up radiolucent. Um, and the one important thing is when you do this PVS impression, you need to try and make sure that you don't press so hard that the teeth are actually touching on the tray. You don't want any bleed through there if you can help it. So here we see the DICOMs of that uh, cone beam scan of the impression. They've been opened in the Blue Sky software. And so a couple of things to be aware of in the software. We have the density slider at the bottom of the 3D rendering window. And so we can adjust the density and that will make the, um, the appearance of the 3D rendering vary. And then we've also got the ability on the right hand side to push create model. And so when you adjust the density, however it appears on the screen at that time, you can actually push create model and it will generate an STL model of that impression. And so just to kind of show you how the density affects things, if I go too far to the left, you'll see um, that I'm starting to get a lot of uh, noise in the impression. Um, you know, there's little uh, distortions that are present all over the impression. If I go to the right hand side too far with the density slider, we start to get a moth eaten appearance in it. And so a model generated from either of those two extremes is not going to be accurate enough to build a guide on. It's going to give you problems. However, somewhere in between those two, there's usually the sweet spot where we can actually get a very accurate representation. Of, of what it is in reality. And so when I look at this, the only bit of distortion I'm seeing is a, is a bit of noise in the uh, palatal vault, which isn't going to matter. Um, so I did a little uh, experiment here. I actually um, used the density slider and the create model function. And I started as, at a density of 1300 and I pushed create model. And then I did that progressively in 100 mil, uh, 100. Uh, unit increments up to 1800 and so here you see the respective models that have been created from that these are all STL models and again on the far left you see at 1300 we've got a lot of noise um, and distortions on the internal of the impression at 1800 at the far other end of the spectrum we're getting that moth-eaten appearance and neither of those are useful but around the 1500 mark the blue model that you see in the upper right um, I got a really nice model out of that, and uh, I actually made guides on it, tried it in, it fit very well. And again, if we look at the uh, model outlines of all of those, when we've got them all turned on at once, let's zoom in a bit, and now let's zoom in a little uh, more still. And so you can see again, the yellow line, which is the one most internal, 
um, is at 1300 and that one is actually if you digitally poured this you would actually end up with an STL model that is smaller than what um, uh, the actual model would be if you poured it up in stone and so that's not helpful to us because if we tried to make a guide on that um, the guide would be made for a smaller model it wouldn't fit in the in the actual mouth or back on a stone model because it would be too small um, other end of the spectrum, if we went with the red outline, which you see is the farthest out, um, that would not only have all those little problems with the moth-eaten holes that we show, showed earlier, uh, but it would also be larger uh, than what the actual model would be. And so, again, we need to find the sweet spot in the middle. And for me, that was at the blue line, which is 1500. And you can see that that blue line follows very closely to where the actual... Um, PVS um, and air uh, line is between these two. So here you see that density of 1500 and we've got a nice 3D rendering in the bottom left and you can see the model outlines on all of the other windows. So at this point we're going to click file and go down to export data. We'll export uh, the 3D rendering there, that, that STL model that we created. So the only thing you want to check is, is the STL model that was created at the density that's best for your machine. I would also suggest putting your export quality on very high. And so you'll save that to wherever you want on your computer. And the next step is that we're going to actually use a totally different program. This is called Autodesk Mesh Mixer, and it's a free program that you can download. Um, it's a very large, robust program, but we only need a couple of functions in that, and that is the, uh, the select um, tool. And if you need to move it around, you might use the edit and transform tool just to move the impression where it's a, a little more easily seen. So here's a video of me actually doing this process. So I've opened it in Mesh Mixer, um, zooming in on the area, and now we'll go to select. And by just left clicking on the outside of the impression, I'm going to start um, drawing my way around at the depth of the vestibule on this impression. And once I do that and let go, it's going to highlight that orange. Just click delete. That's going to delete all of that area. We'll get rid of that little area that I left as well. And then I'm also going to cut out the palette where those uh, bits of um, distortion were. And so what you're going to see now is that we've got basically an outer and an inner uh, STL surface. And so we only want the inner one. So double click on the inside and then go to modify and then click invert. And when you do that, it will invert it and it will select everything um, opposite of what you selected. Again, push delete. Now double click on the internal surface again. And now we need to inverse this. So go to edit and then click flip normals and so now it will make the STL surface um, be uh, the, the portion that was on the inside originally. So we've just generated an STL model. You'll go to file export and uh, save this to wherever you like. So now we have a nice uh, digitally poured STL model that we can use. So at this point, um, treat it just like you would any other STL. You know, if your lab gave you one that they scanned with their lab scanner, or if you had an intraoral scanner, or if you had done a cone beam scan, there's a lot of different ways you could have gotten this. But at this point, the process is the exact same. We'll just import it back into the case so that we can merge it with the cone beam data. And here you see that merge process going on. We're picking the corresponding points. And once you merge it together, you can see how accurate um, of a merge that we've gotten. Uh, the model outline follows exactly along with where the, the uh, cone beam images show the teeth are. And so here's a little video of doing that merge process. We'll go to import STL model. We'll choose the model that we just uh, digitally poured in Mesh Mixer. We'll open it. And now this is using the uh, matching teeth, the automatic method for stitching. So this is a nice feature. It doesn't always work 100% of the time, but when it does, it's really slick. Uh, so I'm just placing corresponding points on the teeth. They don't even have to be in the exact same location. Um, you just have to get them on the same teeth. 
And so once we do that, we're going to click a line. And the software is going to align the STL model to the cone beam data. And again, you can see what that resulting stitch uh, was. It's a very accurate uh, stitch to the cone beam data. Now, the only downside to the workflow that I just showed you is that we actually opened the, uh, the cone beam scan of the impression as a separate case, and we exported out of that. Now, if you use this software, you know that you're, you're just charged uh, for your exports. And so if you open something in a single case, you can export as many times out of that one case and only get charged one time. But since I opened it as two separate cases, I ended up burning two exports. So how could we do this without burning two? Well, you could um, do the same process and just import the, uh, the comb beam scan of the impression as a scan appliance. So let me demonstrate that method real quick. So here we have the cone beam scan of the patient. This is actually my own mouth. And so go to File, Import Scan Appliance, and go to where you have the DICOMs of the, patient, of the uh, PBS impression stored. You'll click OK there. It'll bring this window up, limit your field of view down to where it's just around the impression. And we'll click OK. Now be aware, I sped this little part up, but this takes a bit of time for the software to do, so don't get uh, in a hurry and, and start clicking around in the software because you'll uh, potentially lock it up. And so don't worry about any of the other three windows. Really the only one I want you to pay attention to is the bottom left. And so same process here. You find that sweet spot where you've got the best representation of the impression. If you keep your... Um, your materials and your radiation setting the same once you know it once you know where it fits the best you just always set it to that and now when we click OK it's going to turn that into an STL and there you can see the impression STL that we've got so now exact same process we will export this out of the software and um, we'll uh, use mesh mixer again to turn this into an STL I'm sorry, to digitally pour the, um, the STL model, and then you can import it back into the case. Now, the advantage is that um, as we progress along, we're eventually going to generate the guide. We're not going to get charged a second export to do this. And so one final question, do I have to use PVS putty? Well, you know, not necessarily. Um, I tried this with a number of different materials, and so I tried it with Genie Medium Body PVS as well. Um, in order to get a good model when I did it with the medium body PBS, I had to, to scan it on the child setting with my uh, cone beam machine, which is lower radiation. And I, I have a Serona XG3D. I also had to use the, um, there's an aluminum appliance scanning can that's really intended for scanning dentures and things like that. Um, but I got a really nice model when I used the child setting and that aluminum scanning can. Um, it seemed like with the uh, the lower vis or, or the yeah the lower viscosity impression materials, um, you couldn't have as much radiation getting to it because it would just blow it out. Um, versus the Genie Putty, I just scanned it on the adult setting, just as if it were a patient. Um, so the other thing you'll notice between these two impressions, the one with the Genie Putty, you'll notice um, there's not near as much detail to it. That actually works in your favor. Um, that might be counterintuitive, but remember, we're trying to make a, a, a surgical guide that will fit over this. And sometimes when you have too much detail to the teeth, um, it can create little binding spots where the, the guide is trying to fit in every little nook and cranny in all the embrasures. Um, so using the putty, with it not being as accurate and not flowing into all those nooks and crannies, it has the effect of almost being like it's uh, waxing out those sharp areas. And so the guides that I made on the Genie PVS putty were actually um, a better fit and didn't seem to want to bind as much as when I did it out of the medium body and had the more accurate um, model from the medium body. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, again, this is a huge improvement and this really streamlines the workflow. Uh, we don't have to wait on models to set, <clears throat> to set up. Um, this is a nice workflow where we could scan the patient and then scan the impression 
Uh, we could have it all planned within 15 to 20 minutes and then start it uh, to 3D printing and you could feasibly scan the patient uh, in the morning and have the guide ready about you know two to three hours later. So it's a really nice workflow.